Uh, so what we're trying to do with natural food performance is the same way I, if I ask you, okay, you have 30 days to uh, perform a perfect backflip. You'll probably have some, like, you know, it's like really going to happen. You know, the same way um, I want to turn people's journey towards achieving wellness and healthy goals into a journey of, um, you know, deliciousness, convenience, and a healthy approach. So, there's a major problem um, with the industry. It's heavily weight um, based on plant-based proteins. Uh, the solution is that we are making foods that you're about to try, like the protein muffin, uh, power, power pancake, and in January we're launching power pizza. And that's essentially it, the market. Please ask me about the market for the questions. We'll go back to it. Uh, here's the power muffin. Please ask about the power muffin. Just go out. Uh, power pancakes. Here we have it again. Do our products stick to, to the power name? Please ask during questions. Um, we have our go to market strategies. Uh, products. Here's the team Jessica and I, my Orlando partner, uh, Charles Sarkin. Here's our website. You can find more about um, natural food performance and some Instagram pictures. And that's natural food performance. <laughs> Can you tell me more about the market? Sure. <laughs> Great question. <laughs> I'll double six minutes. Um, so uh, the market. The market on the left is the uh, primary market. The market on the the two markets on the right are secondary markets. One in five Americans. Uh, on 2015 reported had um, a membership to a gym. So we're talking about 50 million plus people that go to gyms and work out regularly. Um, there's a group called the Jogging Moms. So there's 20 million registered joggings in the US. Say half of that is women, so we're talking another 10 million people. Uh, vegans and people with dietary restrictions. Uh, I've had the most success with the first and largest market. That's not a bad problem to have. But uh, I would still like to get some more traction in the, in the other three. Um, and I think it, it's in part, uh, I can make changes on our messaging. But uh, you know, the real, the cool thing is that people try a product and then they keep trying it and buying it and they bring it to their table every day. So right now, the stage uh, market research, which is what I call it, and which we are uh, about to end right now, and start uh, scaling one, which will go from today all the way to October. Um, during the market research, we only engage in business to business uh, distribution. I would basically go to across the gym place, hey, I've got this amazing mop, if you want to try one. Um, and people did and called back, made relationships. Um, right now, we have over 20 local accounts where you can go and buy all of our products, including Vertical Ventures, uh, the Coffee Micro, Saturn Fest Cafe, Anchor College, uh, Anytime Fitness, Tele Fitness, um, and the like. Many products in the area as well. So that's a great thing. Uh, that uh, what seems to be one of our weaknesses, and it's in fact what differentiates us more from like all of the other protein bars out there. Uh, it's baked fresh. Muffins are made on Sundays and are delivered on Monday, fresh. Uh, so the shelf life is 10 days. And um, figuring that out is part of scaling stage one, which starts today. Where do you prepare it? So we manufacture everything out of a um, commercial kitchen uh, called Your Pro Kitchen. It's a, a culinary incubator. <coughs> I am really grateful that I've made connections with them back in Denmark. Uh, what's your traction look like? How many like muffins or food products have you sold? So till this day, uh, we've done over fifteen thousand dollars in sales, um, just with the B two B business model. 
three months ago, we launched online uh, where we sell our pancakes only. I haven't been able to chip them up just yet because of the shelf life. And you can get all of our pancakes online. Um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about your team and what your backgrounds are? <coughs> Yeah, so um, I went to school for uh, business, economics, and finance. Um, I met Jessica Eckert, and you know, during our relationship, I found that she had a great passion for making healthy snacks. And I was really eager to put what I knew uh, into, into you know, reality, see if I knew anything. And it looks like, it looks like I, know, I know some things, but I'm still willing to learn that's why I'm here today. If like you know, there's such a I've I've started crossing uh, quite a path, and I want to meet someone who's three years ahead on the path that I I have yet to cross. So if you know anyone that you know that could potentially uh, be on that path, just three years ahead, just let me know. How do you plan to scale this? Like, what is your next target? I guess you go to market strategy slides probably help you with that. Yeah, so the way we're going to scale this is, first of all, um, the, I work any account, new account that I get in, uh, is, whether it's a CrossFit, whether it's uh, the climbing uh, gym, uh, vertical ventures, I get in comp direct competition just in there with cliff bars, with RX bars, and like all of this huge, huge brands with nationwide presence. I will sell them every single time. They have six to eight months shelf life, and my office with 10 days shelf life, I'll sell them every day. They have to be restocked weekly, there's about three to four months. So how am I gonna scale that? First of all, I already, I'm already having conversations with a team in, uh, in Tampa. It's a company called Supply One. They are offering um, packaging uh, machinery for me, which without adding any like harmful uh, ingredients, it's going to allow me at least to get a minimum four months. I don't know if I want it that long, because um, people really, really um, like the fact that they're baked fresh. So maybe I'll cut it back to, you know, like just one month so that they at least get to the other coast. Yeah. When you mentioned being here to get people who are three years ahead of you, Yeah. <laughs> 
you know what? That's uh, that's uh, we haven't copyrighted that yet, uh, <laughs> but we'll get. It. Eventually, you know, it seems like you're selling in gyms and exercise places. Um, is it too crowded a market to sell this in a Publix or a Whole Foods? Or is your path scaling specifically in the gym and exercise, or do you plan on transitioning? Yeah, so I, for that stage two of scaling up my business, uh, and it'll start in October 2017, or before then, if I get uh, my corporate goal, which is before October 2017, I should have my first month of $21,000 revenue. In order to do that, I need to be closing five accounts weekly uh, from here until October, and I should be able to do that. Uh, currently, I am just one salesman. Team, I'm posting about two accounts per week, so I'm hiring three people to come help me with the sell. Uh, and yeah, if I can repeat the success of outselling Cliff Bars and all of those big brands at all of these local gyms, can we replicate the success at a uh, major retail uh, store? I believe so. Yes, we can. So you started out with the premise that processing food. Uh, pre-digesting the food, which is what the purpose of cooking is. Begin with. I, that, that premise is great, uh, and I agree with it. How is, but then, you know, you have a muffin, right? And the muffin is created by grinding up grains and, and, and all these natural ingredients, essentially, and cooking it and pre-digesting it. So how is that initial premise reflected in the product itself? That is probably the most important question being asked today because I almost forgot and it is a premise and part of my presentation because it ties really, really well into the company and I would have not liked living today without answering that question. So, uh, power muffins, what is it so powerful about a muffin that you would think is highly processed, highly refined, what's the difference? Um, Every single carbohydrate that we use, the carbohydrate sources, come from whole foods. So when we say quinoa flour, it's just, it's not refined, highly processed quinoa flour, it's rounded quinoa. When we say brown rice flour, it's brown brown rice. When we say um, oat flour, it's just brown whole oats. Um, uh, in addition to that, I am really differentiating from uh, other products. Just, just make a test. Go to the market today, pick five random products at the superstore, and do not look at, at protein, sugar, and all of that stuff. Look at the micros. Look how many vitamins and minerals you're really getting. You know, because it, it, what it really comes down to is like whatever you're putting in, make sure that you know you're getting the back for your buck. Most of the times you don't. You just get the carbohydrate, sugar, and stuff, and you don't, you're not getting the minerals. My strategy is that every single one of our products should at least, this is the criteria to develop new products, and we're going to have the daily value of iron, magnesium, magnesium, and zinc. For the, for the pancakes, it's calcium, iron, magnesium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, copper, and magnesium. That's all of your minerals. So you, by consuming my products one day, you've pretty much taken care of like most of your uh, micronutritional uh, uh, needs. So the key developing into that is the fiber. These highly uh, refined products do not have fiber. What really holds down the, the carbohydrates from being, being turned into sugar is the fiber. The fiber acts, imagine a candle and just fuel. So like a hamburger, it's fuel, you would just light it up, boom, sugar. And the fiber acts like a candle. It holds the, the digestion process. You feel full longer. And in, in that manner, I like the recipe. It's so rich that um, it's a whole food. All of our products, even though they're dry mixes, even though they're protein muffins, even though any of these things, they're whole foods. Could I make a follow-up suggestion? Yes. Uh, it might be a good idea to find a commercial muffin that okay, is a good seller, you know, something you get at Starbucks or something, and compare side by side our muffin versus their muffin, and this is what we're bringing to the market that they're not bringing. Exactly.
exactly. And, and to finish that, uh, all of our products have a low glycemic index. That means glycemic index is the rate at which foods are turning to sugar. Uh, our products out of a, from 0 to 100 score 12 to 10. That's really, really low. No insulin spikes are produced uh, if you don't crash after, after consuming one. How often do you work with nutrition to make sure that you're within, with your competition with your power levels? So the orders are fulfilled made to order. So before Monday, we already know at every single gym how many orders they're getting. Um, and uh, as far as like how have I worked my nutrition, was that the first question? Do you work with the nutrition? If so what do you do to help you stay in competition with your competitors? So uh, that whole part just comes from me having a background in struggling with weight and just I've I have a master in Google. Uh, <laughs> and I've, all of this information is out there. It's uh, every single thing that I try and adopt to put into the business is their scientific consensus. So like something really awful about the fitness industry is like here's this bar. Eat it every day, no effort, zero calories, zero sugar, zero, zero, zero results. That it just doesn't work. Develop the habit of Eating healthy first and change your habits in the long term. Um, you you sort of touched on uh, that you're doing quite an extensive market research sort of period. Do you mind sort of sharing with us a snapshot of your plan there? Like, is it product based? Is it market based? Is it competitor based? Is it, what is this again? Just your you you said you have a pretty long period of, of uh, market research. Do you mind sharing with us a sort of snapshot? Of yeah, so the market research at first was like, uh, that I've been doing, every time I close a new account, I ask the manager or like the head of the club, what's your weekly turnover? And what I measure is that our weekly sales should meet 10% plus of their weekly turnover. That, that means essentially what I've been testing since January is that if 100 people come into a store weekly, more than 10 bottles have to be sold. And that's how like, and I've done it this across all of my 20 accounts and I've, I've gotten some real good data. It's simple, uh, but it's uh, a low cost strategy that, I, <laughs> that I've developed myself. What is the price? Uh -oh. What is the price of one of these muffins? Uh, and what is your cost to uh, produce one? Or do you have a, so uh, I will sell these muffins for 180. The um, uh, retail price that I've seen is a low price point of 250, and I've seen them uh, in retail all the way up to 320 to 340. And that's a single presentation. It's not here. That's uh, what you're seeing up there is a tri pack. That's three muffins for one. Uh, and that sells at a 20% discount. My cost right now per unit is around 70 cents. Hi, you've got the nutritional science on bad things. Um, a lot of our questions are resolving, are resolving around, I think, uh, the issue <coughs> of spoilage. So you've got a 10 day freshness target for, let's say, most of your products. And that's what distinguishes you and generates sales from your competition. But you're running up against the spoilage cost, so you're talking machinery and products by expanding that. So are you afraid of losing that primary sales point of pressure in the process? And how do you know resolve that eventually? What was that last part? So if, if, if your 10-day pressure is generating spoilage issues, which I think it would, uh, and cost, which is not going to recover, and you're forced to uh, dilute that quality element, to take the business as it currently is to another city 
is really pretty much finding a commercial kitchen and uh, having the, the permits issued by the local authority to manufacture food. That's a really low overhead, and then that, that will allow us to move, but then you get into the people's issue. Then, um, and if I go that way, uh, the, the, some, all retail, big retailer stores, since I started this project, I know for a fact that if you're not within the sales average, you have to buy back your product at your own cost. So since day one, I've been doing buyback on my product. If, but how do I determine that? I restrict output based on my research that I've been conducting of how many muffins should sell. And the idea is that at every single one of these locations, depending on the weekly turnover, we're selling out. My, my buyback is minimal at this moment, so if I can get that process to a larger scale, maybe I don't need that machine. Uh, but but these are things that are going to need to be figured out. Yeah. I have two questions. One, did you have any transformative internship experiences while you were at Eckerd College? Uh, and you on this path. Yeah. Uh, and then two, what can we as a community do to help you grow this path? <laughs> so, um, I had a, an amazing internship experience here at the Greenhouse. <laughs>